Hello, my name is Michael O'Keefe, aka The Movie List. If you enjoyed this interview and want to hear more top-notch film industry conversations, please press the thumbs up, subscribe to this channel, and hit the bell to stay in the know. Uh, hello, Marlon Espino. Before we talk about your film scoring, can you tell us how life under COVID-19 has been for you? Oh, man. You know, it's been, it's been difficult and interesting. But, you know, all, all things considered, you know, everyone's healthy and, and, and doing well. So, you know, I've, I've been lucky and, you know, uh, friends and family have been lucky as well. So, um, but yeah, you know, on the work front, you know, it's, it's been difficult. Everything's kind of just, you know, come to a halt and, um, but, you know, otherwise all is well, all is well. All right. Well, that's good to know. And I guess if you're living, you're winning to an extent. <laughs> exactly. So why should people be excited to see Inheritance? You know, it's it's a great film. Um, director Von Stein and um, Richard Lewis, another great producer. Um, it's it's uh, it's a good film. You know, it's it's a thriller. It's it's fun. Um, you know, it keeps you on the edge of your seat. And um, you know, I had a great time working on the score. Um, you know, it's just it's it's a good movie. You know, to kind of just sit down and enjoy. So, how did you approach scoring Inheritance? You know, I I approached it um, a little differently than I normally do. Um, I um, I spent most of the time on the script um, and working uh, prior to getting any any film. So um, there were a lot of uh, instances where I would record ideas um, just based on you know like emotional beats or you know scenes of of what I wanted to to feel, and then brought in the visuals and and um, worked and conformed and, and rewrote what I had done, which, you know, was uh, different than I, I normally do. Normally I sit down with a guide piano and I'm looking at the film and I just, you know, churn something out. So it was a different way for me to kind of approach it. And um, I, I liked it. it. It worked out well. I was able to, to do some things that I wouldn't normally have done. So, um, yeah. How would you describe your musical style? My musical style? You know, that's tough. Um, you know, I have a lot of different influences. Um, you know, I have uh, grew up in West Texas, so I have, you know, a lot of that, uh, you know, I don't know, like Billy, <laughs> um, Outlaw Country. And um, mm -hmm. I, I played a lot of metal bands through college, but then I studied, you know, classical um, guitar and, and composition as well. So, you know, it's kind of all over the place. So I think it's kind of like a hybrid of sorts. Um, wow. Metal bands, huh? Who are, yeah. who are some metal bands that, that, that influence you? Oh, you know, early, early on, I was a big, uh, Bob Rock fan. So, you know, like mm -hmm. Mick Mars, you know, his huge guitars and Zach Wild. Um, and then, you know, eventually in college, I was really like, you know, the metal core stuff. Um, but um, yeah, it's, it's some of that stuff is disturbing, man. <laughs> What's that? Some of that stuff is disturbing. It is, you know. It's not um, just noise. It's really yeah. scary. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of anger, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> it's there's, something. There's I don't know. Actually, a lot going on musically. You'd be surprised. Mm -hmm. um, it's pretty complicated, and you know, I, a lot of that rhythmic stuff. You know, it's kind of been an influence that I use you know, like in, in string parts or, you know, when you, when you move it out of that instrumentation, um, you know, there's some really um, interesting stuff going on, but yeah, it's, I hear you, man. It's, it's hard when it's just like a wall of noise. <laughs> it can seem a little overwhelming. You have to work up to it. You, 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 <laughs> exactly. you do your punk rock, you have your little gateways to, to, to get to uh, the, 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 what, what sounds like someone dying. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, do you think yeah. that someone could be like a great metal film composer? Could that ever happen one day? You know, it had to be very project specific. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can have definitely those influences. And, um, you know, I've, I've done some metal cues, uh, you know, for some projects I've, I've done on, but I, I don't know that you could. Make. I think it would overwhelm it. The images <laughs> yeah. would, just, would blur it to the abyss. All right. So th th this is a fun diversion. I like that. So please tell me about other notable projects you have worked on. 
Uh, you know, I've um, been lucky enough to to come up, um, you know, assisting and working with uh, Mark Mangina, um, you know, a great mentor and friend. So, you know, I've been lucky to work on, you know, um, feature animations with Disney. Uh, you know, worked on Moana. I was on that for three years and, um, you know, Planes 1 and 2 and uh, some some live action. So, you know, I've, I've been really lucky that I, I learned, uh, you know, from really from my opinion, you know, kind of one of the best and, um, was able to to really get that you know one on one mentoring and um, it's just really you know influenced me and and kind of shaped how I do things and um, it's just been a really really great experience. You did some uh, music on the Lion King, can I am I uh, correct? Yeah, I worked on a, a couple songs. Um, mm -hmm. Again, my my mentor the, it was through Mark Mancina. He worked on the original film and. Oh, wow. Came out, oh, I don't know, what, 94? He yeah. was uh, responsible for doing all the arrangements and all the songs. So, he, you know, he did, um, you know, Kuna Matata. And he actually wrote a song. Um, he tells the story much better than I do. Um, but he wrote a song when he wasn't supposed to and tried to pitch it during the original. And he got shut down real quick. <laughs> uh, but eventually they came back to him and uh, they used that song for the musical it was the big hit it's called um, he lives in you and so um hans you know uh, gave mark a call and said hey i want you guys to come produce um that track for for the new uh, live action so i think um uh yeah it was, it was a really great experience um you know getting to to be in the room with him and you know him and lebo and you know it was the the original guys it was you know hans and uh, nick lenny smith um Lebo and Mark, it's, it was, it was pretty, pretty amazing just to be in the room with those guys as their legends. So that's very cool. I'll, I'll curious uh, to know, I'm always at, uh, curious to ask composers this question. How often do you interact with the cast of the movies you work on? It depends, you know, project to project. Um, mm. Sometimes not at all. Uh, and right. then there's been other times, you know, with longer projects that you, you do get to, um, you know, spend some time, but it's, it's, Project to project. Not, it's, yeah, it's project to project, yeah. Who, who are some, some fun actors to hang out with or, or just, you know, uh, be in the room with? Oh, you know, I, you know, I'd have to come back to, to you on that one. There's so many great people, and I've had, uh, you know, great experiences with all of them. So They're all equally wonderful. <laughs> Absolutely. Movie stars are just incredible. They have an aura. Even if they, they're usually just, you know, just whatever, like people, they're just, they're just people. But if you see them on the screen, they're, um, they're, it's like they're, you're speaking to an immortal, right? <laughs> exactly. It's so, a... sorry, yeah. Oh, go ahead. Okay. Do you have a, a spirit animal musician that you draw on for inspiration and it, that sort of is uh, almost responsible for where you are right now? That's a tough question. That's a good one. Um, you know, I don't know. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a guitarist, so I, I tend to, to, you know, pick up a guitar. So when I'm, you know, stuck, so I, I, you know, maybe it'd be, you know, like Randy Rhodes or Mick Mars, you know, um, always, you know, kind of go back to, to where I started. Um, okay, cool, cool. So who is the director you want to work for the most? Oh, you know, I think the further I get in is um, the more I realize how important it is, you know, the people you're working with. And, you know, um, mm -hmm. I've been lucky enough to, to work with some great, great people and, and not so great people. Um, but, you know, I think that's the most important thing. You know, I think uh, being on a project, you know, with a collaborative team, it just makes this the biggest difference I've ever, you know, could, could imagine. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, you know, it's just really just those directors that create that creative, safe, creative space where you guys are just, you know, collaborating and trying to, to get the film to the best possible, you know, end result. Um, you know, those are the projects I want to be on. Cool. So um, I was recently, uh, uh, or last year, actually, I was staying with a, a film composer in Los Angeles. Um, Christopher Yun, and he was scoring <laughs> Pet Cemetery at the time. Oh wow! Yeah, and he didn't. His whole thing is he he basically told me when he's working on a job, he doesn't sleep. And I've heard other composers say that, and then I've heard other composers say that's crazy. 
Uh, so what's your, what's your sleep policy when, while, while you're working on a project? You know, it, de- it, de- <laughs> it depends on the schedule. Yeah. I've been, I've been there where I'm working, you know, 20, 20 hours a day, just trying to get it done. Um, and that, you know, I've, I've seen guys that make it work where they can work nine to five and, and create that balance. Um, you know, uh, my mentor Mark's kind of big on, on trying to, you know, create balance. So I, I'm, I'm trying <laughs> my best to, to create that work, um, family balance. Um, but yeah, it's, it's tough, man. It, it's when you're, you know, slammed and, and trying to, trying to make a deadline and it's hard cause you know, you never know how long it's going to take to do something creatively. It could take, you know, come together quickly or you could just be sitting there trying to hash it out for what mm. seems like a lifetime. Do um, yeah, there's definitely been those sleepless, sleepless nights for sure. Is that, is it like, even if it, you're on top of it, do you ever just like wait, like lay awake and just think about tinkering the notes here and there? <laughs> oh yeah. It's, it's super, super stressful. And especially you'll like, okay, this is perfect. And then you just, you listen to it fresh. You're like, Oh no, that's, I, I don't like that. And you just, I mean, a lot of times when I'm printing something down, I just have to walk away. Otherwise I'll just yeah. keep messing with it. You know, it's, it's, it's a curse. <laughs> That's the problem. Like, uh, like I know uh, as myself, like as someone who writes, like you write while you're writing it, you're like, this is gold. And then you, you, co- you leave it alone for 24 hours and then you read it and you go, what, what was I thinking? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It kind of like all becomes junk, but then, then you kind of realize, you know, you're just going to make the best junk possible. And Hey, what can you do? We're all just human. Am I right? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Well, Marlon Espino, thank you very much for your time. Before we say goodbye, can you recommend a few albums to my audience for their quarantined lives? Oh, man. You know, I have a one-year-old right now. So oh. I have had the, um, the little Disney Channel going, and it's, it's, been, it's been a nice pickup for me, you know, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Disney Channel vibes. So that's, that's what you recommend. All right, well, thank you very much for your time. All right. Thanks, Michael. You have a wonderful day.